Hello, tiny friends. Welcome back to Tiny Keyhole Minis. I'm Jolene, and today I'll be making push button light switches and electrical outlets for the house. Um, of course, they won't be functional, they'll just be decorative. I began this project with a small piece of graph paper, and then I sketched out a one by one inch square, and then just sketched out the little plate. I made a single plate and a double plate, and you can see there's tiny squares within the one inch square. Um, so I just used those as my guide. Um, the single plate is three small squares by two small squares. I did make a double plate, but I won't be creating a double plate. And then I just cut out the little pieces because I was thinking at first, I was just going to uh, use these little pieces and draw the plates myself and cut them out, but it would have been very tedious. So I went into my Cricut design program and put all these little pieces together so that my machine can cut them out. Um, if I had cut them out by hand, they would not have been <laughs> even cuts and the little circles would have probably been not quite a circle <laughs> shape. Um, I'm also going to use these tiny little button uh, pieces that I have left over from previous um, Bentley House Mini projects. And these were just left over that were popped out of the pieces that I needed to use. So I saved them so that I can create little button switches. Um, I don't have enough little buttons for all the buttons and the switches, so I'm gonna be using some of the cutouts from the circles. And then I'll use these buttons, these bigger button switches to look like the button that's popped out. Um, you could do this by hand if you like, and maybe pop a hole in the templates or in the pieces with something sharp like a little needle or a little poker pin or some sort, or maybe a little hand drill. But um, I just decided to have my machine do it and it'll go a little bit faster for me because this whole project was a little bit of a tedious project because there's so many little pieces and parts to put together. Um, and besides that, see those two little templates right here? Kiwi came by and flapped her wings and they blew away. <laughs> so I just decided to have the machine cut that out and make it easier on me and have this project go a little bit faster. Okay, so I made a, a little list of how many I was gonna need um, per plate uh, for each room. And uh, this list isn't really accurate. I just ended up making 10 of each, 10 push button switches, 10 electrical outlets. And then I decided how many I was gonna put in each room and where they were gonna go. So um, this is just my little list. <laughs> for each plate that I'm making. Okay, I've got all my pieces cut out. Um, each plate will have a face plate, a back plate. Um, I've got all my parts separated, all the cutouts um, that are gonna be inserts. I got my little buttons in a bag so I don't lose them because I've already tipped over the cut they were in and had to collect them. So each plate will be glued on top of each other like this and look sort of like this. And I'm just using this thicker browned craft paper. It's almost like paper bag. I probably could have used chipboard, cereal box of some sort or cardstock and probably would have got better cuts and pieces. But I just grabbed what I saw at first so i'm just going to use this stuff and these are the little tiny pieces that will be inserted into some of the cutouts 
in the look, something like that. So you can see how tiny these pieces really are. And I'll be making 10 of each. So it was very tedious, but it was worth it uh, to add this tiny little detail into the house. So I'm going to begin uh, painting these pieces. These two pieces I have glued together uh, just to see how they were going to look. I probably should have glued them all together and then painted them, but I did not do that. I painted them all separately and I decided to go with half being white and then age them up with a little wash and then half being uh, old brass. So I got five of each plate and I'm using freezer paper and I'm actually using the wax side of the freezer paper and I'm going to begin uh, with a base coat of black acrylic and then I'll go over with my metallic antique gold once these dry. And like I said, um, it would probably be much easier to have glued these parts together and then just painted them as one part. Uh, but that thought did not come till after this whole process was completely done. Using the black under the antique gold really helps give it an old brass look. Um, you can see some of it as it's drying what it's looking like. Um, it just gives that darker tone and making it look more old. So right now I'm painting all these tiny little button pieces and um, pieces that are going to go back into the holes that are cut out. And I'm going to move forward with the white ones as well and come back when everything is all dry and just glue them all together. Okay, so I'm all ready for assemble. I left the little buttons black. Um, so you can see that those are black and then um, the outlet pieces are gold. And then of course the white ones are white. Um, but all the buttons for both colors will be black. I'm just using my tacky glue for this. And again, I have no idea why I just didn't glue these pieces together and then paint them. Like I said, I didn't think about it and it probably would have made this process a little bit faster with well, the painting process anyways. So I'm just gluing the face plates to the back plates and I'm going to go ahead and do this for all of these pieces and then add the little buttons and the inserts for the outlets. Before I add those, um, I decided to go ahead and trim off the little corners because they were so square and pointy and I wanted them to have a bit of a rounder edge. So that's what I'm doing here. And now that that's done, I am going to add all the little insert pieces. Um, this was really difficult because once I painted these little uh, bigger buttons black, I could not tell if they were standing straight up, if they were laying on their side. So um, it took a little bit to get these buttons in and sitting right. Uh, they would have been easier to see if I had just left them unpainted. So um, right now I'm just going in and making sure that they're all going to be standing straight up. And I'm just adding a little bit of tacky glue into one of the holes. And then I'm going to put the bigger button hopefully laying straight up and not sideways. And then I'm going to take the flatter buttons and add those to the second hole. So it kind of looks like one of the buttons are pushed in and one's pushed popping out. And anytime you hear that funny sound, that swishing or flapping, that's Kiwi flapping her wings. And she's usually sitting on the back of my chair or somewhere near me. This is what they look like up close. And I'm also trying to use the camera to see if that one's actually laying on its side or standing straight up. And uh, it's not quite standing straight up. So 
it looks like it's laying on its side. So I'm going to go ahead and flip that over and try again. And they're just so gosh darn tiny. Okay, so that part is over. And uh, this is what they're looking like. Now, I decided to leave one of the holes missing or one of the holes empty because I wanted to plug the radio into it and make it look like it was plugged into the wall. I thought that would be a really cute detail in the living room. There used to be a couple prongs on this plug and I removed them so that I can glue them flat into place. So I'll be doing that. And these would probably be okay on the wall as is. They don't look too bad. I've put them up on the wall, but um, I decided to go one step further and give them a little more dimension and make their plates slightly bigger. This is what the push button looks like. So how I did that was adding another piece and then a little piece in the back to give it something to glue to the wall. Um, I took some of these bigger pieces that I had cut out for the double plates and decided not to use. And I'm glad I, I decided not to use them because I like the way this worked out. I didn't have enough cutouts, so I just used one of the cutouts and created the few more that I needed. By hand but I'm just putting the face plate on tracing it so it looks like that trimming it down if it needs to be trimmed and then I'm going to go in with my pencil and make diagonal lines in each corner so it kind of looks like a picture frame then I'm going to take my craft blade and I'm just going to score all the pencil lines I'm not cutting all the way through. I'm just scoring them so that I can fold them back. And this will make the plate pop out a little more from the wall and make it look like it has a little more dimension. And it just gives a little more, um, it just makes the plate slightly bigger. So it becomes a little more noticeable on the wall. So I'll just bend them back where I scored them and then glue the front plate right on top. And then I'm going to have to go back in and repaint all of these sides. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it's all part of the learning process, right? <laughs> and I'm just going to use a black fine tip uh, Sharpie marker to create the little lines that look like the outlet holes for the prongs, the prong holes. Um, I'm just gonna add that as well. But in the future, if I make these, I will know to put them all together first before painting. And I am going to create two more because I would like one up in the attic to plug the projector into. Um, and I would like, a, I ha ended up with an extra light switch. So that's gonna go up in the attic. And then I would like an outlet in the hallway under the window as well so i put enough pieces to the side to create those when i get up into those areas of the house um, and the process now that i've done this and put it all together will go a little more smoothly by any means you can create this idea any way you see fit to according to how you create but this is, I'm just showing you how I got there <laughs> and what I did. But you can definitely take this idea and run with it and uh, tweak it according to what's suitable for you. So I'm going to come back and um, go ahead and start installing all these pieces into the house. Okay, so beginning with the radio plug, it's going to sit here by this table that I just redid and added new hardware onto it. Um, I aged it a little and then just added the new drawer poles. Uh, the radio will be sitting on this table. I added a little bit of wax to the bottom of the, the radio. And I'm also going to be adding my 
lake lamp to this table to sit in front of the window when I upgrade that shade on the lake lamp light. Um, I don't know if you've seen that in a past video, but the plug will go on the wall about right here. Right now I'm just deciding if I want the plug to be on the top or on the bottom. And um, I thought it looked better plugged into the bottom outlet. So I'm just applying a really good amount of tacky glue and I've let this glue sit a little bit so it's super tacky and it's uh, a little bit thicker and this will help it from uh, falling down and sliding around on me. So when you're doing something like this you want to let your tacky glue definitely sit for a little bit and start to thicken up and then it'll prevent a lot of that slipping and moving around. So let's see if I can just get this on here in one shot. It's very difficult to get into this house, <laughs> but uh, I think I got it. It looks a little slightly crooked at this angle, but it's pretty straight for the most part. Um, it looked like it just shifted a little on me, so I'm fixing that up. Um, so that's what that looks like. I'm going to put the light switch here on this side. Now, normally, um, from my memories, light switches would probably be most common on the other side of the door where the doorknob is, so that when you open the door, you got the light switch right there. But I have that mirror sitting there, and I didn't want to have to cram them in together on that space. So I just set it here and it doesn't look too bad. I decided to put the brass switches downstairs and in the hallway and then the rooms and the attic will have the white switches. So the living room got the most, the living room's got uh, one, two, three, three outlets. So I'm going to put another one right here underneath the stairs and you won't really be able to see it unless you get in there and look or if I take pictures, but I thought that would be a great place um, in case anybody did look in or if you can see it from the front windows, you will see a nice little outlet right there under the stairs and that's where she can plug her vacuum in. And... Uh, there's also going to be a little mouse trap under there as well. I packed it up when I packed the house up, but um, I have to remember to go get that and place that in there. So I'm just trying to get this uh, the best I can. And I'm using the camera to be my eye because I cannot see what's going on back there. <laughs> But it looks like I got it in a really good height and it looks about the same distance from the baseboard as the first one I put in. So not too bad. Not too bad at all. Just making some adjustments. <laughs> good thing I have this camera to help me out. But um, I do finally get it to be a little straighter than that. Okay, so I'm going to move on and I'll just check it in a little bit to make sure it didn't move around on me. I'm going to put another push button switch here by the steps so that she can use that as she's going up the steps to turn on the upstairs light. Um, I just always remember seeing a switch by the stairs on the bottom and then one up at the top. So this one's going to go right here on the wall. And now Margo can turn the light on before she goes upstairs. The other one's going to be right here. This is going to be an electrical outlet by where Poe's little dog bed is. She doesn't have anything really over here to plug in unless I put a light up on the mantle, but um, 
I just wanted it to be there so that it can be seen. The bone that I created for Poe out of polymer clay and then I just dirtied it up. But it's your typical cartoon basic dog bone. Um, I'm actually going to create him something more realistic. Uh, maybe like a knuckle bone or something like that. Maybe half chewed. Um, but for now, um, he enjoys this one. It's okay. So let me give this back to Poe because he looks like he was guarding it and no plugging it into the outlet Poe. Okay, so this is the living room so far and I'm gonna be coming back here soon to create that mantle mirror for that wall because it just looks like such an eyesore being empty like that with all that bare space. And um, I'm gonna be doing the wall that's going up the steps. Um, with the, the photos and the pictures. Um, here is her cockatoo bird and he doesn't have a name yet, tiny friends. So if anybody would like to name him, throw me your ideas in the comments below and I'll just pick my favorite name. For some reason, I just haven't named him and I was thinking of Pepe Le Peep, but um, Poe already has a P name so I kind of want to avoid another P name. For the pets, I don't want them. No, I'll be that was kiwi peeping. I don't want them to all have the same letter. Um, but so, if you can come up with a name for her cockatoo, definitely let me know in the comments below. And here is what the outlets look like over here. But I'll be coming back to the living room with more accessories and details to add to this room. Okay, so going into the kitchen, I've added one here on the wall. And then the outlet is over here by the vent. And I'm seeing that Poe needs a bowl of water. So I'm going to have to create him that. Poor Poe. He's probably so thirsty. That was just a bowl of dog food that I've had in my stash. So I'll be doing something with that as well. And then I'm going to put a light switch back by the sink because I'll be adding a working light back there somewhere. So there's a switch on that shelf that I just laid there. And then I have the chicken teapot sitting up on this shelf. Now it doesn't have a lid that's removable. It's all one piece, but I absolutely adore this little pot and thought it looked really good sitting up here. So that is where that's sitting. And then I'll show you the chicken dish on the other shelf. This is where that chicken dish is sitting. Now that is two pieces. The chicken is the lid, so you can remove that. Okay, now I'm going upstairs. So in the hallway, oh my gosh, Arlon, you startled me. Stop doing that. Okay, so this is Orlan. He is my worry doll. Um, he's from Guatemala, and his in his country, his name means brave. Um, I didn't want to tell you this before, tiny friends, because I didn't want to scare you away. But he's the little ghost boy that comes to visit the Josephine house. He's about three or four. And when the house used to be the Josephine School for Girls, his sister was a resident here and he would come and visit frequently. And he remembers playing with all the little girls. So he likes to come and visit. Uh, he doesn't mind that it's a house now because it makes him feel like it's his home. Um, he comes to visit the old lady. He doesn't bother her, but he does like to play with the pets. and. The animals and they like having him around too. I'm not sure if Margot is okay with it but uh, he's a sweet little boy so he doesn't really bother her. You see that smile on his face? He's always smiling and that's because he's very fond of this house. Uh, he's pretty shy and he's always hiding so I'm surprised to see him um, appear like he did. I think he must be getting used to me working on the house and being around and he's probably getting more comfortable. I'm assuming he must have passed back when the plagues came through and uh, he probably got sick. Um, 
So here he is in the Josephine house. And I'm so excited that we got to see him today. Even though he startled me, I don't think he knows he's a ghost boy. Okay, so back to the switches. Um, I put a switch here on this wall because I would like to put um, maybe like a gossip chair with um, a telephone up here or some something to fill that space. And then I put the outlet up there by the window or the, the switch. And I would like to add the outlet underneath that window as well. Uh, just for added detail okay so in the bathroom um i put the switch by the door but i actually took it down and moved it closer to the door uh, i didn't like that placement and it wasn't too straight but for the outlet i put it up higher um, because a lot of the times in the bathrooms you'll see an outlet up higher by the mirror or the sink for grooming tools so i placed that there i'm not sure if they did that back in these days, but um, I thought that would be a really cute place to put that and a really neat detail to add that up higher. Besides the fact that I don't have any space down lower for you to see it. So I'm kind of glad they did that in the bathrooms. Um, now I'm gonna show you what I've done to a few of the pieces for the sewing room and then go into the sewing room. Okay, for this tulip lamp, um, I did coat and paint the cords on the last two lamps. Um, I didn't do a very good job because you're really not going to see the cords on these last two lamps. I'm going to hide them. Um, so I basically just rushed that. But I coated it with Mod Podge and then I went ahead and painted it and then I gave it a black wash with water and acrylic. Um, I set it on top of this little table with a little lace doily over it. And what I did with the cord was I kind of just raveled it up and bunched it up. Um, it's bendable wire, so it just went right into place. And I shoved it up underneath the table. And then I took the battery pack and I just kind of pushed that up in there. And it just all stayed put without any adhesive or having to add anything. So um, that's where that is. And it just looks something like this where you can't really see it. And where I placed this table, you're really not gonna see that. And then I added a little bit of wax behind the switch. Okay, for the sewing table, um, I added some more detail and finished it off. Um, I've got some fabric and I created a little um, tin full of pins and sewing needles and I'll show you what I used for that in a moment, but that little pin that's laying on, it's actually a sewing needle laying on the table right here. Um, that actually fell there with a little bit of glue on it when I was trying to put it into the tin and I just liked the way it looked, so I left it. Uh, the fabric is turned, uh, it's turned on the wrong side because Margo is in the middle of creating a hem and that's how you would have to make those hems, right? You have to flip the fabric over. I put a little slit under where the needle is and pulled it over more so it kind of looked like the needle was going in the fabric. And then um, I stopped right here so that it looked like she was in the process of creating that hem. I also flipped the fabric over on this one side because I really wanted that print to show. So I just flipped it over so that you're able to see what the print really looks like. So it just looks like Margot is in the middle of creating some sort of garment, uh, maybe a top or a dress. On this side, I added a couple more sewing pins and a spool of thread and then there's the metal cup full of scissors and then the pair that are laying on the table are the ones that came with the Chris and Bond kit. So that is it for the sewing table. Um, it's completed and ready to be put into the room. For the tomato pin cushion, somebody suggested that I 
maybe add some caviar beads to make it look like there's pins. So I just glued a few caviar beads and that's what that looks like. I don't know if you can hear the rain outside, but it's raining really hard right now. Uh, we're just waiting for that storm to come through the hurricane that's out there. Um, for the dress form, I added a pattern and a couple more of those sewing pins. Uh, for the pattern, I just used parchment paper and then just drew on a printed design. And then I added some caviar beads to look like it was pinned in place. I didn't put the sleeve part around it because I wanted it to look like she was in the middle of adding that pattern and pinning that pattern on and putting it in place. So I just left that part open um, and then I added three pins up here on the top and I'm going to show you what I used um, for that pin part of the sewing pins and also I used it to create little sewing needles as well. Um, but this is what I used. It's some sort of bead jewelry wire, but it's kind of flexible, like a thick thread. So it, it does bend, but it doesn't bend like a regular wire. When it bends, it just stays put into place. So I thought this would make really good pins and needles. And I just dipped the tip in tacky glue and then picked up the caviar bead with it and then just snipped off the length I needed. And that is how I made those. So there is that. That stuff is kind of funny. It's not quite thread. It's not quite wire. It's kind of like a hybrid of the two. I don't know. But that is the dress form. And now I'm going into the sewing room so that I can show you where I place those switches. And then I'll go back in after I fill the room to see what I have in there, how much room I have left, and what all I need. So this is where I have placed the first switch. And that will be the switch for the wall sconce on the other side of that door. And then on the opposite wall, over on this side, I placed an outlet. This is where Margot's table will be, her sewing machine. And then I put the shelf there on that wall. Sorry about the camera. I'm trying to get in this room and it's difficult. Um, there's the switch by the door for the light above. And then I placed an outlet under that window, which I don't think is a good idea because um, that window leaks. So that might be a problem. And that'll be kind of like a hidden detail because there's going to be so much stuff back there. You won't hardly see it unless you're really looking. Um, but it's okay. So that'll be for this light, that switch right there. And I noticed that I did not add a minor detail, which was the screws, the little dots to look like the screws in the plates. So I might have to go back in and do that. I'm not worried about the brass ones, but the white ones look like they're missing. Um, here for this lamp, I've added some wax on the bottom and on the switch and also on the battery pack. And you're not going to see any of this cord. I'm going to hide it behind the folding screen. Um, you'll just see a little bit of this part right here. So um, I'm not worried about that job, that poor job I did on coating that cord. But um, I'm going to rig this up on the wall, show you how I did that. And then I'm going to place everything inside and we'll take a look at the sewing room. So this is what that looks like. And I'll be able to get in there and reach around the screen and press that button. It's going to be difficult, but I'll be able to do it. And um, now I'm going to show you what I have so far. So here is the sewing room with everything, so almost everything so far. There are a few accessories that I did not put in yet, um, but you can see the hideaway floorboard, 
that I created. And if you would like to see how I created that when I installed this floor, I'll put a link in the description box below if you have not seen that video yet. But this is where the old couple uh, stashes and hides their valuables and their goods. There's some uh, savings and some keys to the original house when it was the Josephine School for Girls. There's a couple, a couple almanacs from the couple years that they had really good crops and a really great harvest, so they considered that to be good luck. Uh, there's the original deed to the house is in there, um, the old man's death certificate and his will. And I was thinking about making some ration books because I do have um, some old ration books that was my father-in-law's from when he was younger and from the war. So um, they have green stamps in them. So I've made copies of those and I was thinking about creating some of those ration books with the green stamps and then placing those in there as well. But this is their um, hideaway floorboard. Okay, so going into the sewing room. Now this is so hard to set up because these rooms are so narrow and I have made so much stuff for this room. Um, but I chose to put the sewing table here up front because technically there'd be a wall here and I really wanted that detail and all that fun stuff to be seen first. So I brought that up to the front of the room. And there's the dress form. And from what I'm seeing, I really don't think I'm going to have any room to create that standing shelf unit that I want to create. So I'm probably going to switch that idea up a little bit and maybe create an armoire or a wardrobe for the bedroom um, using those posts that I wanted to use. I'm very sorry about the camera. I really am. I'm just trying to get in here so you can see everything I have going on. Um, so I still need to place some pictures in this room and I still have uh, one more video of accessories to create. Um, and then I'm going to fill up that shelf with some accessories. You can see the mirror in the back and you can hardly see the outlet back there but um, in person if you if somebody is really observing the room they might see that hidden detail so it may stay this way I may switch it around a little um, I'm not really sure but it doesn't always look this crowded sometimes she's not ironing and the board is put away or set aside and then she has all that space in the middle there to walk through but this is what it's looking like so far and this is what I've created so far so one more video left for this room and then I can call it completed and I am going to show you what it looks like with the lights on there's not a lot of light in here even with the three lights they're pretty dim uh, the tulip light is the brightest light but the other two are yellow, so they kind of dim the room down. So I'm going to fill this shelf up with fabrics and accessories and do a few more accessories for this room. I'm just giving you a look at everything in here so far. But this room is almost done. After my next video, this room will be completely 100% done. And I will have one room completely, totally 100% done, I think. Unless I add other stuff, of course, which might happen. But this, this was really fun to make, Tiny Friends. All the accessories and pieces that I have been wanting to make for a while now are all coming to life here in her little sewing dressing room. Okay, so this is what it looks like with the lights on, and my lights are off, and I just love this room. I do. I love how this room has turned out. Um, I know Margot absolutely is going to enjoy being in this room, 
There's a little, the little mouse trap with cheese. And you can see the little mouse hole. Um, the little mouse hole is actually really cut out of that baseboard. So it's not just painted on, it's actually carved out. And that is actually part of, I think the wall video when I created the wall. But I will list the wall as well in the description box below. I'll put a link for both the floor and the wall. And you can see how I created that uh, faux closet and how I renovated this room. Um, if you have not seen that and you're interested in that. So tiny friends, that is it for today's video. I really hope you enjoyed it. Um, let me know what you thought in the comments below. Don't forget, uh, Marco's bird is looking for a new name. So if you got an idea, you got a name for a bird that comes to mind, definitely leave it in the comments below. Uh, just remember, <laughs> not a P name. So no P names. And then I'll pick the one I like the most, which will probably be hard. I'll probably have a few that I love, but I will pick one and that will be the bird's name. And I have one more video, which will be accessories. And then I'm going to move on to a different project. I think outside of the house. Um, I know I still have the doll to restring and I'm excited about that. So she's coming up soon. And I'm really sorry, tiny friends, about my camera handling. Um, I know it's like, Ugh. I hope I didn't get anybody sick. I'm just trying to get in here to give you all a better view. It's really difficult to get up in here. Um, oh, I know what I'll do. I'll post some pictures at the end of this video. So at the very end, I'll say my goodbye and then I'll show you some pictures and you can see everything a little bit better and what I've done today. So um, thank you all for subscribing and watching. Um, please subscribe if you'd like to see more of my projects in the future. And don't forget to hit that top bell notification button to be notified every time I upload a new project. And I am going to close up this floorboard to hide their valuables. And until next time, tiny friends, I hope you all have a lovely day and I will see you soon on the mini side. Bye-bye. Orlan was very fond of this next melody. His sister had a music box that played this song.